Hello, Calkers. I wanted to see if I could summarize what we've done this week and maybe address a question that was on the forum. Uh, I think it's a pretty good question that comes up a lot, and that is when this stray letter A pops up or any other letters pop up, what does the what what is the question asking for? And this is this is one of the things that makes mathematics difficult, is because instead of asking just about what's happening in a particular number, often we'll ask questions about. Uh, to, to give that answer for a general number, a general number a in this case. So what the problem was asking is, is given this function here, uh, y equals one, square root of 1 minus x, uh, what, what is the tangent line at a, a equals 0? And the question was, what is a? Well, in the text, uh, it's using a to represent the place where you're trying to find either the tangent line or the linear approximation or the linearization, they're all the same thing. As a matter of fact, I wrote two different statements here and they're equivalent. I could say, what is the linear approximation of this function at x equals a? Well, you might say, well, what's a? Well, a is any fixed but unknown number. Or I could ask, what is the tangent line of the graph of f at a comma f of a? Well, that's the same question. As we saw in class, we were looking at this. I think I have this defined. Let's make sure I do. Uh, suppose we were looking at a graph of this thing. So how do I do that? Well, let's go from minus 2.5 comma 2.5. Whoops, what did I do wrong? Hmm. Ah, I see what I did wrong. I forgot to tell it over what variable, see? So here's our graph, sideways parabola, and we see that along here it looks smooth, and if you zoom in at any point, let's see, let's let a be a half. That's how the text would say it is. What does, what's the tangent line at a equal a half? Well, if we would want to zoom in in class, we zoomed in there, so how do we do that? Well, let's get a little to the left of a, let's not my, uh, a little to the left of 0.5, and a little to the right, a little to the left, little to the right. I will not sing. I will not sing. Here we go. And as we zoom in, see? Nice straight line. And the question is, is what is that line? That line that we see, turns out there's a very specific line that we're seeing. And that's what we mean by the tangent line. That's what we mean by the linear approximation of f at 1 half. And if you pick some other place, let's say at 0. So let's go to the little to the left of 0 and a little to the right of 0 we get another line. It's a different line. It's the tangent line to the graph at 0. Matter of fact, what's the f of a there? Well, that's f of 0. It looks to be 1 and that sure enough is what it is. And it's got probably a different slope there. And the question is, is can we find each of these linear approximations, each of these tangent lines for any value a? Can we write down a form for it? And the answer is yes. So let's back out here real quick and see if we can do that. Now, we saw in class, so there's my function, uh, we saw in class that we reminded ourselves, because we all remembered this, is that the form for a line the slope point form for a line was, well, if the point was x1, y1, then we got y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1, right? And if you've got a point and you've got a slope of a line, you plug it in there and you'll get an equation with x and y in it, okay? Actually, we want to put equals equals for an equation, right? Well, what point are we trying to form a line at? We're trying to form a line at a comma f of a, where a can be any number you want, but because this is mathematics, we can actually just use the letter A itself and treat it like a number and then have a general formula for any number. So here, this would be A. And here, this would be F of A. And furthermore, this slope here, we talked about that that this is where the magic of calculus comes in. This is where the work comes in. The first magic using limits is that uh, if we take a limiting process of picking two points, one point really close to A, like A plus some little bitty amount, some little bitty uh, delta amount, that uh, we would get almost the line. And in the limit, we would get the slope that we were looking for. And uh, we're going to learn next week, uh, actually 
mid in just a few days we're going to start seeing the magic of how this came about but right now we will just treat it as a mystery magical thing and it's called the derivative of the function that you give me a function then there's this process that I can do called taking the derivative that will give me a new function that hands me the slopes of these tangent lines now one of the many things we can Mathematica right now we can just use Mathematica to hand that to us so let's try that um, so one thing I can do, we'll call it f1, is define a function. And we learned in class we want to use equals here instead of colon equals. I think I'll go ahead and tell you why. Because we're actually doing this process to f, we want the process to occur before we define the function. And colon equals says hold off on doing anything to the right until we're ready for it. Well here, we do not want to stick in a specific value of x until after we take the derivative. So we will put equals here and that means that mathematical will take the derivative of the function, it will get a new function and use that to define f1 and that's what we want. And so the magic function that hands us the slopes of the tangent lines to the original function square root of 1 minus x is this here. Of course we would have guessed that, right? Well, no, I guess we wouldn't have. Now, there's another way of actually doing that, but before we do, let's go ahead and stick that in. And then what do we want? We want f1 at some value a will tell us the slope. And so if we hit enter here, we get a general form for the line, the tangent line, at the point a comma f of a, or the linear approximation. Now, in class, we went ahead and moved this over. We, we went ahead and added that to the other side. So I'll take away that minus, put that in, plus, and that's the form that we'll use, like that. Now, I'll point out something to you that actually Mathematica makes life much easier because taking a derivative is something we do a lot in mathematics and analysis and such. So it's got a built-in form for it. Once you define f, so I'll remind you that it has a definition for f. It knows what f is. Then if you ever write down f prime, it goes ahead and takes the derivative. And that, that symbology is something that we use in the text and everywhere, is that f prime is the derivative of f. And two primes would be something called the second derivative and on and on. So here we could actually write Instead of worrying with f, I'm going ahead and tell you that f prime will give me the same thing. Okay? So, what does that have to do with anything? Well, suppose we wanted that tangent line at a half. We wanted that linear approximation right there. Well, we just plug in. We substitute everywhere we see an a. We substitute in one half. And we know how to do that. So, let's try that. So, I will take this whole equation and everywhere I see an a I'm going to do substitution which is slash dot right I'm going to substitute in for a one half now we get this line this is all a number I can actually go ahead and say uh, set precision and let's say we just want everything to be uh, four digit numbers boop see so we can see that that's actually just a line but however you want to do it, um, if you take this line, we'll copy that, the f part, the expression part, and we will paste it up here so that it will plot both of them. What I expect to see is a tangent line, whoops, sorry, I expect to see is a tangent line at, oh my goodness, look at that. So mathematics got a lot going on there. This is why you don't want decimals. This is why you want exact numbers. So let's go back and take that nonsense off. And we are reminded that decimals go on forever. Ah, oh, much better, much better, much better. Let's take this and paste it in. We have learned our lesson. We have learned our lesson. There we go. There we go. Same thing, much more compact. Okay, and let's run that. And look what we got. We've got the original function, and we've got the tangent line at a half. It's beautiful, it's maroon, it's Elon, it's great, right? Now, what the forum was asking about is what happens if A is 0, or A is negative 1, or A is any value you want. Well, any value you put into here, you will get the tangent line. And I hope that helps some. We'll do some in class, and then we'll find out what in the world is this magic that gives us these functions that allows us to do this, okay? I'm hoping you're having a good weekend. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.